Hello everybody, this is Brent Warner at EdTech TV. I hope you're doing well. There's been a few things coming up online recently that I want to talk about, and uh, so today we're going to kind of cover that in a in an aspect of a question and a and a um, and a popular tool that's been coming up. So the question is, how can I bring tech into a low tech school? Uh, a lot of teachers are not fortunate enough to be in a one-to-one -one school or you know maybe not all the students have phones and things like that and so a lot of teachers want to integrate technology but don't necessarily have the tools to do it so today we're going to talk about a way you can do some stuff if your students don't all have their own technology that they can bring into the classroom and what we're going to talk about specifically is plickers uh Plickers is short for paper clickers, and it's a great, great resource for teachers who are in a school situation, as long as the teacher has a smartphone, and all the students need is a printed out piece of paper. Uh, I've been following a lot about this uh, recently on, you know, Twitter, there's been a few ed tech con conferences going on where people are talking about it, and even at the recent ed camp that I went to. People are just loving it, and so I wanted to make sure that I shared it with everybody and uh, and uh, showed you how it works. Now, Plickers does have some very low-tech stuff, like printing out pieces of paper. So today's video is going to look a little different in parts, but uh, let's take a look and see how Plickers works. The first thing we're going to do is go to Plickers.com. And before we jump in, I do want to show this picture that's right on the on the uh, home screen. It shows everything that Plickers is. So what we see here is a bunch of students holding up their p little pieces of paper, and you can see that everyone is different, and the teacher is at the front of the class scanning everything with their phone. So these students are making multiple choice questions and answers, and they're turning their paper based on what their choice is. So if it's facing upwards then that's going to be an a choice if it's face you know if they turn it 90 degrees then it's going to be a b another 90 degrees c another 90 degrees d so that's how students make their choices and the teacher just sweeps their phone right across the classroom and it automatically picks up what student is making a what choice so it's a really really nice function and a way to kind of quickly uh, assess everything that's going on so we're going to take a look at how to do it. Of course, you're going to sign up and I am going to sign in. And as soon as you're in, you're going to see an option for your classes that there's a library, there's reports. You're going to go to your classes and you can either make a demo class or add a new class. So uh, I've played around with a little bit. I made a demo class. Right now I'm going to make a new class. They're the same thing, basically. So I'm going to say new class. You're going to name your class. I'm going to call mine Mining 101. The year, uh, you can choose what year the students are in, uh, whether it's uh, you know K-12 or even higher education. Uh, the subject, we'll call it general education. And you can choose the class color. This will help you kind of remember this later. I'll go with the EdTech TV orange. Here's where you start adding your students in. Today, we've got a few volunteer students, so I want to introduce them to you. Today I'd like to thank these lovely volunteers for helping out today. We've got Balin, Dwalin, Owen, and Glowin. Thanks so much for offering to help out you guys, really appreciate it. So when you're in the class you have the choice and you can either copy and paste if you already have the students names on a list somewhere, just copy and paste it right there. Uh, since I've only got four students I'm going to put their names in directly. I've only chosen four because I've got my four volunteers today, but I do have Balin, Dwalin, Owen, Glowin, and I can do with a class up to uh, 63 students, so you've got a fairly large size class you can work with here. Um, and now that I know I've got my four students, I can also choose if I wanted to to edit their name, archive them, delete them if somebody left the class for whatever reason. Uh, so there you've got your students' names. The next step that you're going to do is go and print the cards. Now this is totally free, just go to cards and right here you can download the standard Plickers card set. Uh, you can choose a quite a different, couple different choices here, the expanded version, large font versions, etc. I think you're going to be fine with just a standard version. Click on it, it'll give you a PDF 
and this is where we get started. Now this is a full PDF with all 63, but since I've only got four students, I'm only gonna print out four cards right now. But before we do that, I wanna show you what we're looking at. Um, I'm not gonna get all into the details of it, but every card has a number, so in this case we're looking at number one, and it has uh, four letters that you can choose from, A, B, C, and D. And when the students choose whichever letter facing upwards, that's how they make their choices. But you can also see that the letters are very small and hard to read, so only a person actually holding the paper could see what choice they're making. So let's print these out. So now that we've got the cards created, we're going to want to go and create the questions. To do that, we'll go to library and simply type in a question. So for my students, I'm gonna ask the following question and I'll give some possible answers. At the same time, I can also choose if they are the correct answers. So if I'm if I'm saying that one's a right answer, then I can choose that one. Um, in this case, we'll say never. And then I'm gonna save it. And I'm gonna add it to my Mining 101 class. And so now I know that I've got it set for that class. All right, so now we're gonna go back to the students. I'm going to open up my Plickers app on my phone, whether it's iPhone or Android, that's fine. And then I'm going to click on Mining 101. I'm going to click on the question that I want. And here you can see on the phone it's not really giving the full question. But when I go back into the, uh, the live view that I'm going to use if I have a projector in my classroom, I'm going to click on live view. And then we can see that I'll be able to show this all to the students. I'll also maybe hide the response panel if I don't want to show everybody that. Um, so I'll kind of go like that. That'll show that. And then they'll be able to see these choices, A, B, C, or D, always, sometimes, occasionally, or never. Then on my phone, I'm going to click on the camera option. And here it's going to let me see that I'm working with the different students. And as I pull back... You can see that it's registered all four students and it's giving me these red marks at the top saying that they're wrong, okay? That all of these are wrong. Now, of course, I would ask the students to rotate these to make their choices. So looking at the different students, we might have... We might have choices like this, and now we can see that it's already recognizing everybody. See that we've got Balin and Dwalin, uh, choice A and choice D, and then as I scroll along, it's got Owen and Glowin, and it's telling me who's making the right choices and who isn't and what numbers are being made. Everything's showing up right there. So then I'm just going to hit the check mark, and I've got the results recorded. At the same time, I can bring back the response panel. So it shows that uh, we've got all the answers made here. I can also go to the reports if I want, and I can see um, who made what votes and things like that. So it's pretty great, and as you can see, the teacher has a little bit of technology, the phone and the computer, of course, but the students don't have to have anything. Now, you don't have to choose a uh, correct answer. The students could have polls, and there could just be you know, whatever choice they have, you can do true false with these, but it's excellent to have this option. Uh, if you know that you're not in a school or in a district that has a one-to-one, -one, or maybe, you know, the students can't afford those types of things, there's all sorts of reasons, and there's tons of teachers out there who would need a feature like this, but can't really get all the benefit of having all their students pull out their phones every time in class. And so... Plickers is a great way around it, and it's an incredibly creative idea. Uh, I'd recommend that you play around with it and take a look at the other options. There's a lot to work around with, and you can go from pretty small classes to pretty large classes, as you could see before. Um, the technology, as you're scanning it, you saw before, 
tells you who everybody is so you make sure that you're working with the right students that they're not passing their cards around and things like that but uh what a great way to work together with everybody and everything's totally free except for the cost of printing out a piece of paper so you can't beat that uh, let's go take a look at the homework so that's it for plickers today we're going to take a look at your homework uh, the first one is to go and get an account and download the app at plickers.com and I'm trying something a little bit new. I'm interested to see what you guys think about it. Uh, please go download the one sheet at edtech.tv. What I'm going to try and do is uh, a lot of times teachers don't have time to look around on all the websites and things. And maybe some people aren't as prone to uh, professional development. But I know that you guys are because you're out here on EdTech TV and other websites. So what I'm trying to do is create a simple one sheet um, that kind of gives an overview of the app or the service that I'm covering for that session. So I've created one for Plickers and you can go download it at edtech.tv. Uh, if you just go into this particular post, you can find it. Um, and go sign up and you can go grab it. It's uh, something you could print out or you could email out a PDF. It's pretty simple, um, but it might give the benefit to some of the teachers who maybe aren't as proactive about their professional development as you are or just don't have the time or haven't seen everything. So I kind of try to put everything together onto one sheet, just the uh, features and what it does. And so hopefully it's useful for some people. And then finally, of course, share Plickers with your fellow teachers. And one great way to do that is to download the one sheet and print it out. Or just, you know, try it out, show it to them, show them what it does. And I think people will be pretty amazed. I'd love it if you follow me. Uh, I'm happy to hear from you all the time. Twitter at EdTechTV. Instagram at EdTechTV. YouTube, EdTechTV uh, slash YouTube. And Facebook.com slash EdTechTV. I hope you guys are doing really well. I was really happy to do this kind of, I mean, it's still high tech, but it's kind of the high tech, low tech version today. Um, I don't think we all have access to all the great technology all the time. So it's really good that people are out there creating great things that are not necessarily requiring everybody to have full access to technology. So go ahead and play around with it. I really want to hear from you guys, see what you think. And if you have any questions, please do let me know. I will do my best to answer them for you. Hope all's going well and take care.